After you install everything, we're going to test the operation of the interface. You're going to press and hold in top right corner of the screen for a few seconds and release and the interface is going to be activated, like so. Now, you can see the interface is activated and whatever is shown on the phone is now on the screen. 2010-2012 Lincoln MKZ demo presented on Ford Flex. Quality product since 2002. All first generation sync radios in Ford and Lincoln are absolutely identical. After dashboard disassembly, installation is identical in all Ford and Lincolns. If there's a newer version of this video, first line in the description will say click here for updated video. All products are 100% made in the USA. Please support American jobs. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is also available. Vehicle disassembly is shown on Ford Flex. Please, if you want to skip it, go 6 minutes into the video. Keep in mind, all Ford and Lincolns with first generation sync system have identical navigation computers. This disassembly is inside Ford Flex. It is similar to other Ford and Lincoln vehicles. We have uh, disassembly manuals upon request. We can make movie for every single car, but it's very similar to all the other cars. However, as we mentioned previously, that the navigations are absolutely identical in all the vehicles listed in the beginning of the video. This way, the installation procedure is going to be identical on all the cars. Just the appearance might be a little bit different of the dashboard segments of the cars. So, with this particular vehicle, we're going to start this way. We're going to go ahead and open this panel, the armrest. This whole panel, we're going to, from here, we're going to pull it up. And we're going to go here, there's clips here, they are big clips on each side. We're going to pull this panel up, so we're going to pull it up. The panel is going to come out. Then, there's going to be two screws there. Then we're going to go up. We're going to remove the whole wooden panel. Behind the wooden panel there's going to be one and two, two screws. Then on the side here, we're going to go down to the side here. And over here, if you can see it, we're going to remove, the, we're going to remove this. And so behind this panel, what we're going to find is that right here, we have screws on each side. The screw on each side, remove it so this panel can come out because you're going to remove screw here and you're going to remove screws behind this panel. But the screw on each side, you're going to pop this panel open and you're going to remove screw on this side and on the other side. And this is going to allow you to pull this whole center console out. Okay, so first we're going to remove this panel. Take a plastic tool, similar, carefully, and remove this. Go all the way to the end. And then when you're done removing it, you will find two screws that you have to remove for this panel. But there's two screws on the bottom as well. So we're going to go ahead and remove those two screws. And then from there, after we remove two screws, we're going to go down. Okay, so now you see the panels are open. If you see panels are open, there's two screws on each side that you have to remove so this panel can come out. But we're going to first remove this panel. So you're going to start by opening this panel from the top. the panel on then you're gonna have to switch the vehicle into gear and then over here the two big long type of clips so you have to kind of pull on them right but be very careful not to break anything but they're there and they're gonna remove you see and the panel comes out now this disconnect this switch if you have and then you can disconnect another one for the light so disconnect those switches and pull the panel out Now, you got two screws over here that you need to pull out. So this panel comes out, but don't forget the screws on the side, on each side, behind this panel right here, there's a screw, so this whole panel comes out, so you're going to remove the screws as well. 
so now when all the screws are out, I'm just gonna head and pull on this panel a little bit, right? Grab it from down here. You can pull it out. Then over here you have automatic uh, climate control sensor, so don't break it. And then you can go ahead and pull the rest of the panel out. Just hold this panel kind of up. So pull the bottom out. Now I'm gonna go up. And then hold this up, and this whole panel comes out. I'm gonna place this because that's not gonna be in the way. Move this whole panel, disconnect the switch, and disconnect the connectors in the back of the panel. So now, since the, um, the panels are removed, we need to remove the screen and the radio. You got four screws, and then you got two screws here, and there's two more screws behind the screen. So we're gonna go ahead and remove all this stuff. After you un after you unscrew everything, we're gonna go ahead and try to install. You, you have cables that were supplied with the interface so got cables with this so this cable that straight cable that goes in the back of this unit in the back of the radio unit got a second cable has a little angle like that that cable goes in the back of the screen and then you got the plug and play harness that harness that entire harness goes in the back of the radio and then you just put it all together it's pretty much like a little um, contract a little Lego set type of deal snaps in place and you're done okay so now that you removed everything you receive the interface. The interface has your HDMI port, HD digital HDMI port. This is 100% through HD. Your USB update port and your USB power port to power up your devices. Then you got the video port, the digital video ports, and then you got the main power, which has the also RCAs. Then you have this cable where one side goes into the interface and then the straight cable that one connects into the back of the radio unit then you have this cable that one plugs into the second port on the interface and then the cable that has the angle one that plugs in into the back of the screen and then you have this audio video cable this is your audio for your system and four camera inputs front rear left and right then you have this plug and play harness that plugs in into the back of the radio so you're simply going to remove the radio match all the connectors you can't go wrong they're all different sizes so you're just gonna match each one plug it all in and test the interface okay so this is the back of the screen this plug you're going to replug this plug it has the other end of this connect that goes into the radio you're no longer going to use this instead you're going to plug this right angle one in here the other end of the right angle connector is going to go into the interface and then you're gonna plug this, this one into the radio and then the other end is going to go to the interface so factory connector is no longer used unless you removing the interface and bringing the car back to factory you're gonna plug this in otherwise the factory image is going to pass right through our interface and it's gonna appear just as before you install the interface into the car after you install everything, we're going to test the operation of the interface. You're going to press and hold in the top right corner of the screen for a few seconds and release and the interface is going to be activated, like so. Now, you can see the interface is activated. 
and whatever is shown on the phone is now on the screen. This model type of year cars that we listed in the beginning of the video have very good quality screen and that's why the image is clear and we're the only company on the market not only made in USA interface it is the only interface with HD quality mirroring even though some other interfaces may offer HDMI input still that HDMI input is not going to be HD quality now I want to show you a little trick if you go into the settings of your Waze application if you go into the of Google Maps here maps or map quest you will find this feature it's called I'm gonna show it to you actually then I'm gonna tell you what it's called so go into the settings in settings you're gonna to go to the feature called sound and voice then you're gonna to go to the feature called sound output you need this feature play as Bluetooth phone call when directions come in to the car you're listening to your factory I am FM radio CD player XM radio or any other source you don't have to have the unit set to auxiliary audio in order to hear directions the direction is going to come in into your car as Bluetooth call so you know when you're driving and the phone starts to ring and you hear the speakers ringing and you decide whether to answer or hang up well in this case you don't have to decide anything instead of phone ringing you will hear directions make a right make a left go straight or you know accident ahead or whatever the app wants to notify of after the after the notification is done with it will go back to playing your source you don't have to do anything you don't have to interact with the system in any way shape or form it is all done without any interaction by the driver this available in Waze, MapQuest, Nokia's Here We Go Maps and Google Maps all those apps are available absolutely free from the App Store or Google Play Store this interface has no limits Netflix works, YouTube works, all applications work 100%. Next, we're going to demo YouTube. So, here you can see YouTube video playing. It is not playing on the phone, it is playing right out there. We can pause and we can play. You can also do Hey Siri. And if you have the Siri activated, you can use it as just like the CarPlay you would use. And then you can do just like the modern CarPlay. You don't need to CarPlay. You need to have a CarPlay, a new car to do all these features. Look at this. Hey Siri, open YouTube. Hey Siri, open Waze. If you're doing nothing and you're waiting for somebody, you can watch Hulu let's say so let's see you see the Hulu is on the phone and then it's waiting for you to start playing movie so um, for example we got in the Hulu I believe we got some movie trailers so we can play a trailer um, from from a movie and the trailer is going to appear on the screen uh, I think this is an ad and any other app uh, you can do HBO, Amazon, Prime Video, there's no limit. There's no limit. Any app can be used. Now, we got the cameras. Rear camera. If you don't have the camera installed, the rear camera is going to appear. And you see how I have the logo on the bottom? It says rear camera. This is where your rear camera is going to appear. If there's a factory rear camera, you put it in reverse, the camera is going to appear. If you want the camera to appear through our interface, it will need to be simply rewired with an RCA. Now, you got front camera right there again you got the image front camera and you got it on top so you know you're watching the front camera so with the glance you can see which camera is activated next one left camera right there you see left camera logo is on the left bottom corner so you just glance and you know which camera is on the screen same thing with the right camera 
right there, right camera. Again, you glance and you know the image is here, so you know it's the right camera on the screen. Now, whether they have reverse or factory camera, when you put it in, when you put the car in reverse, a rear camera is going to override everything. So in this case, we have a factory camera, right? You got the factory camera. When you put it in drive, right? You have the front camera automatically. So it doesn't matter whether you have aftermarket or original camera, the front camera you can install and it's going to be on the screen. That's your right back to right camera. The front camera stays on the screen up until you reach the speed of 10 miles an hour. The left and right language camera, and those are not parking cameras. For parking cameras, the cameras have to be facing down on the ground, and you can use uh, maybe 360 surround view cameras and stuff like that. This interface is built for specifically for lane watch cameras. You put the left signal on, left camera comes on. You put the right turn signal on, the right camera comes on. Now, the, you can activate the cameras two ways. Either they activate when you're standing and doing nothing, or when you're driving over 15 miles an hour. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, let's say, I'm on phone mirroring, right? I go left camera, I go right camera, and the right camera comes on. Even if I'm on the factory screen, same thing, left camera, right camera, left camera, right camera, reverse, and then you're going to drive up to 10 miles an hour, the front camera is going to stay on the screen. That's pretty much it. After you tested all your installed components and everything works, you can go ahead and put the vehicle back together. Please click the logo on the left hand side to subscribe to the channel. Subscription works on smartphones, tablets and computers. Please click the notification bell and leave a comment. To watch other videos, click the video on the right hand side. And again, thank you for watching and send us your questions.